Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Stephanie. This is Lindy Stitches where I talk about cross stitch here on YouTube. I talk about my projects. I talk about my designs. I design under the name Lindy Stitches. You can find my work at lindystitches.com. Now, if you are a person that knows me personally, doesn't care about cross stitch, but just lurks around to watch my videos, I would just like you to know that I know how to read the YouTube analytics and I know who you are. Do you think I scared them off? I have enjoyed this fall more than any fall in my entire life. I stitched and I stitched and I enjoyed the season so much. And my stitching is going to reflect that. I have three finishes. I actually have more along the lines of five, but I can't show some of them to you. But I've got a lot of good stuff for this video, and so I hope that um, you yourself are enjoying some cozy stitching. Let's get started. I want to show you my finishes first, okay? Because they're wonderful. Dark October stitching, hashtag Dark October stitching. Can it just always be October? I don't understand why there are other, other months in the year. I really, really enjoyed myself. My first finish is from Punch Needle and Primitive, Primitive Stitcher 2019 issue. It is Eye of Newt by Nicole Franklin of Kaniki's. I hope you're sitting there having spasms of cuteness because look. If you don't like this, we have to break up. Look at his beady little eye and his little arms and legs. I stitched this on Murky by Picture This Plus 32 Count Linen. I am no longer a Murky Virgin. This fabric is amazing. Also of note is the black is Cosmo Floss. I think Cosmo Floss is produced in Japan or somewhere over there. I really, really liked it. Now, when all is said and done, I don't think that it looks much different than DMC, but while I was stitching with it, it has this feel and this sheen that is different than DMC. And what that all means, I have no idea. But the Cosmo Floss was very enjoyable. My friend Sandra sent it to me. Thank you, Sandra. I really love it, and I can't wait to use the other colors that you sent my way. It's really nice floss. Have any of you stitched with Cosmo? It's, like I said, I can't like put words to why it feels different, Coverage-wise, I think it's pretty much the same as DMC, but it feels really nice. So I don't know what that means. I have Newt. Next finish was Moon and Spider Apple Cider by Needlework Press. By the way, the YouTube consensus is that everyone hates mouth noises. Apple cider. I started my last video with apple cider and told you that I wouldn't drink it on camera because I hate mouth noises. Apparently that is, this is a universal phenomenon. No, it's not universal, but many of you agreed with me <laughs> that mouth noises are disgusting and abhorrent and we all need to be aware of that fact. I have a major issue, and it's developed over the last five years. I never used to be this way, but now it's like I cannot ignore it. It goes up the back of my head, and it makes me want to think about where to hide the body of the person who is chewing chips. What? Or corn nuts! You know who you are. 
I stitched this on 32 count linen by Luminous Fiber Arts. This is called Opulence. Every time I say that word, I have to think about how to say it. I don't know why. This was fun. I stitched it with most of the called for colors, but who really cares? I love high contrast patterns like checkerboard, houndstooth, polka dots. I'm immediately drawn in. I love this chart. It's beautiful. Moving on to um, the turkey section of my finishes. I stitched more and finished more than one turkey since I saw you last, but I don't want to show it to you for reasons. This is Heartstring Samplery, Beth Twist. T is for turkey. She actually designed this pattern for me, dedicated to me and my Indiana turkeys. That was a lie, but it sounded really nice, didn't it? T is for turkey. I was going to put the letters is for as the last step and I just decided to leave them off because I just liked how it looked when it said just turkey. Uh, the middle of these flowers, I did those big star stitches that I can never remember the name of instead of cross stitching them because it's faster and it looks nicer. Uh, stitch this with all, most of the called floor classic color works, a couple of them I didn't have for some bizarre reason. And this is a gorgeous, wonderful pattern. I stitched this on vacation, started stitching it in the car on a fabric that I had picked out that was a label day 32 count. And I was stitching along thinking, this fabric is so nice to stitch on in the car. It's so easy to see. Stitch, stitch, stitch. Stitch the top border. And I knew it was way too big. And it was mislabeled. It was a fabric that I had ordered in the mail and it actually was a 28 count. So I had to rip it all out. I ended up buying this fabric on my trip it's a 32 count linen in country French latte. It's a really nice color. No modeling or anything, but lovely to work on. That is not the first time that's happened to me that a fabric is mislabeled. And I just need to learn the lesson that if it even remotely looks wrong before you stitch, <laughs> you need to measure and count and make sure. But I love this. I ordered the frame off Etsy. Uh, it is a shop called Signed and Numbered. They make really lovely frames. I designed, um, there's no place like home except grandma's for one of their frames. They have a ton of colors and finishes. They're very high quality. Um, I was going to order the color. This was why it was important that it was on the same count. I want it to fit in this frame. was going to order the color that Beth ordered and be a copycat, but then at the last minute I decided I'm really a blue-green girl, so I tried to... They had a color that was really similar to this blue-green of the turkey's head. How cute. How cute is that going to look? Spasmy cute. That's it for finishes. May I please show you the two Christmas patterns that I have released in the last few days. Hopefully you have already seen them. Let's start with my favorite of the two. As the first Lindy Stitches drum, um, I explained that I did a video with uh, Kim of Sassy Jack Stitchery. I'll link it down below. Let me write that down. Um, and explain this link to video with Kim. That was fun. I explained that I've never stitched a drum before and I was looking at drum patterns like, oh, I should stitch a drum. And I was like, nah, I'll just design a drum. And, um, that's how this came about. This is Mary Manatees. 
by Lindy Stitches. And I'm just gonna slowly rotate it. It features a pair of manatees, um, a mom and a baby traveling on to their holiday festivities and there are plenty of other river travelers in here. I love their lips. And I love these little fish. They're like five stitches in a French knot. They're so fun. Um, and a turtle. And it is just so fun. Um, Lois at Lady Dot Creates finished this for me, and she just did an impeccable job. Um, I I wanted a wool on the top, and I just love I love houndstooth and herringbone wool. I don't know why, but I just have a thing for it. This is Whale's Tail Wool by Lady Dot Creates. That's going to be in my shop as well as she did, she dyed a special color of ribbon for me. This is called Sea Pickle. <sighs> Lois shares my love of words. And she made this wonderful pin set <laughs> for the drum. Oh my gosh. And these are her Chianti palms. It just comes together to make the sweetest little thing. I love this. And so... Let me just tell you that as a designer, photographing this drum was no joke. Like, how do you photograph it? It's, it goes all the way around. There's no way to photograph it. So I put tons of photographs on my pattern. What? I tried to get the best angle on the front and then... This is what the pattern looks like if you just wanted to stitch it flat. And then I put two more photos on the back of the different angles. I just wanted to go overkill. If there's a, a ditch to fall in, I wanted to fall into the too many photos of the drum instead of the what in the world does the other side look like. So um, that's my Mary Manatees drum. Um, a lot of my auto ship shops already have their copies up. Um, so if you want to get your hands on a copy, uh, look at your local needlework store, or I will have them on my website, lindystitches.com. So the second pattern uh, is full of goodness. I'm going to show you the pattern first because I want you to guess how big it is. Cross stitch is so funny. You can see things and you think they're one size, but they're totally not that size. This is called stocking stuffers, and um, it is two holiday swans that have cozily nested into some quilted stockings. So I've replicated cross stitch pattern, a cross stitch pattern before my granny square on the stars bright. This time I wanted to do a log cabin and I was inspired. I was inspired by a pink log cabin quilt that a wonderful uh, quilter on Instagram showed her name and I put her on the back of the pattern and I got her permission and she was happy, I was happy, she inspired me. Her name is Karen, and her Instagram handle I put on the screen, it is um, Spetsy, but her log cabin quilt looked similar to this, and I was like, I love your, I love your stocking so much. Would you mind if I kind of used it as inspiration for a cross stitch pattern? She said, absolutely go for it. So that was inspired by her, and I had so much fun picking out the colors, the pinks and the, purples that I just like I'm gonna do it in and I'm gonna do it again and so I did aquas and teals and purples on the other swan and so you could do whatever you want you could do your own color scheme your own log cabin wouldn't that be fun your own color swan who cares this this is a fun pattern so Lois again finished these for me and I sent them to her and she was like, what do you want me to do with them? I was like, 
I have no idea. She's a genius. I don't have to have any ideas. She makes it really easy on me. So here's how big they are. <laughs> the black swan she finished into a giant pin keep and it has this, oops, it has this ribbon that you use to hang it up with. These were model stitched, I have to say, I forgot to attribute my manatee. My manatee was stitched by Pam. Thank you so much, Pam. These were stitched by Chris and she did a fantastic job and it took her like three weeks. So maybe she doesn't, maybe she's a vampire and she doesn't sleep. I'm kidding, Chris would be the last person who would be a vampire. I think someone's hungry and they're making a lot of noise. It's the cat, not a child. The second swan she finished as a box top. And look, what did I put in here? Oh, I have like holiday accoutrement in here. Okay. She finished as a box and just look. Look how wonderful this is. Okay. She finished this as a box top. Her finishing is out of this world because look at this. Those are like vintage shopping lists or ledgers. Like legit, they're not scrapbook paper. So pretty. So pretty. So these are the stocking stuffers. They are the same size. Sometimes when you hold them, when you hold them opposite. They're exactly the same size. They are pretty much exactly the same pattern, only flipped and with different colors. And I hope that you like them. So those are my new releases. Um, they were a lot of fun. I have two more Christmas releases in the works and then we are done for the year. Done for the year. So next I just have to show you that I got this in the mail. This is an autographed portrait of my muse for ex-school friend. This is Amanda May. <laughs> I told her that I put these by my, the side of my bed. Was not kidding. Because she's my muse. If you haven't checked out her floss tube channel, I will link it down below. She is a lot of fun. Also, I have... As of the time of this recording, I have a couple Emily bags left. If you're interested in the Mamali bag for Emily's house, there's a couple in my shop if you want to go pop over. All right, let's talk about my giveaway from last time. I asked you to tell me what your favorite autumnal floss color was, and for a few days I actually kept track of the comments so that I could see what the most famous fall floss color was and this one won this one had the most mentions autumn leaves by gentle art beautiful mustard yellow with some shots of rust gorgeous second place was fragrant clothes by gentle art beautiful pumpkin orange uh the Giveaway was for Scary One. There's stuff everywhere. This was the giveaway. The winning comment was by Ray Redford, and she said that her favorite floss was Weeks Dye Works Persimmon. I've never eaten persimmon, have you? It's a southern thing. I don't even know what a persimmon looks like. Whenever I absentmindedly like wonder something on my video, inevitably someone will tell me in the comments. So I should really just make a video talking about all my existential questions, problems, musings, and wonderings. And they would get taken care of in the comments. Ray Redford, get a hold of me, uh, Steph at LindyStitches.com, and this will be yours. Today's giveaway is an awesome one. You are not gonna wanna fast forward through this. I am giving away two full Samplers Not Forgotten Bouquet 1813 kits. I have two of them to give away. Now, this giveaway is sponsored 
by a lovely LNS owner named Carla who contacted me. She owns Cobweb Corner in Iowa. She also has a really nice website. I think you should go check it out. Um, she contacted me and said, hey, can I send you two of these to give away on your floss tube channel? The reason was apparently a lot of you went to buy it from her when I showed my finish. And I was kind of flabbergasted by that. But hey, it is a fantastic project just to remind you how fantastic it is. Here's my finish. Now, my ribbon is super wonky. My ribbon skills could use some work, but I kind of like how wonky it is because I like wonky things. This project is adorable and so satisfying. It's, it stitches up really quickly and it's so lovely. Whenever I pick up one of my pillows that has walnut shells in it, I smell it. <laughs> because I don't think there's anything as lovely as the smell of a crushed walnut filled pin cushion. Excuse me, can you give us a few moments alone? If you would like to win a bouquet 1813 kit from me, I would like you to answer or discuss the topic down below. And if you answer or discuss these questions, I will know that you are interested in this kit, unless you outright tell me I'm not interested in the kit. So don't say giveaway, be 18 and all the normal rules. You don't have to live in the United States, but leave me a comment. Now here is the topic I would like to discuss down below. Whip adoption, projects that you'd like to pass on. Have you ever passed along one of your projects when it was not completed? Have you adopted out a project? Have you adopted out someone else's project? How do you feel about adopting out a whip? I'm bringing this up because I got rid of Santa Claus. Woodland Santa by Dimensions was probably a third done and I sent him packing. I sent him packing and I feel great about it. And I wish everyone felt so good about giving up on a project. I really do, because I think some of us slog through things that we should just chuck. Chuck it to someone else who can appreciate it and love it. And so let's talk about that. Tell me your thoughts down below. I have a few questions that I thought of that I think could enable you, if you are in this place where you do not like one of your projects, maybe if you thought about these questions, it would enable you and give you the freedom you need to just give up. Are you ready? Question number one, how do you feel when you are stitching on this project that you don't like? You know you don't like it, whether it's the pattern, the fabric, the whatever, you don't like this project. How do you feel when you are stitching it? Are you forcing yourself to stitch it? Do you feel bad? Um, do you feel stressed out? Do you feel guilty? Do you feel anything negative? Okay, notice those feelings. Uh, with Santa, uh, I started him on a whim. I was feeling the holiday spirit and decided to make a spontaneous start. And at the time, I wanted to do a funky fabric choice, and I really didn't feel like it was working out for Santa. I didn't think that the fabric I had put him on did him justice, and it bothered me every time I pulled him out to stitch him. Um, I know myself. I know I am a neutral or blue or green, blue and greens are neutrals in my world. Um, I know that those fabrics I feel comfortable with. I feel like everything vibes with them. They make me happy. Santa was not making me happy. Question number two, if you could turn back time on this whip, would you not have started it? Or would you start have started it in a different way? 
In other words, do you regret even having this project? Notice. Number three, how will you feel when this project is done? How will you feel when this project is done? Okay. Whether it's positive or negative, because I, I, I fully appreciate that you might hate the project, but you might feel really, really proud of yourself that you completed it. Okay. Is that feeling of pride or relief worth all of the negative feelings that we talked about before? Maybe it is. Maybe it's not. I don't know. I had to learn these kind of feelings and like self observations about books because I used to be one of these people that if I started a book, I had to finish the book. Why? I don't know. There is some sort of pride in it being able to push yourself through something that you realize you're not enjoying. But I had to realize like, okay, number one, my life is short. I'm not going to be able to read all the books in the world. Number two, I started to notice that if halfway through the book I realized I really don't like this, I'm not enjoying this, this isn't going to be worth it, finishing the book gave me very little satisfaction because it was more about, oh, thank goodness I'm done with that and it's out of my life. It wasn't, thank goodness I spent time enjoying and learning and profiting from a book. Am I making any sense here? Here's the thing about our wonderful stitching community. You are connected to probably at least 20 people who would love to finish your project and proudly display it. Do you realize that? Like, yeah, that whip you hate, that you can't stand. There is someone in the stitching community who would gladly adopt it enjoy it, finish it, and then display it with pride. Give it away. Like, give it away. So I myself have been um, both the <laughs> giver upper. Um, I've given away two of my whips. Um, Plum Street Sampler Spring Delivery, Trisha at Three Elf Threads finished that project, and now Santa. Um, I've also been the adopter of a project. Nell at Little Yellow House Crafts uh, allowed me to adopt her half-finished winter sampler, and I love that project so much. I did finish it. I adopted it with joy. I enjoyed stitching it, and I love that when I hang it up, I not only think about the joy I had while I was stitching it, but I think about Nell, too. So anyway, um, I hope that was helpful, and... I would like to hear your comments about uh, giving up on projects and allowing other people to finish them down below. All right, let's talk about haul. On my vacation, we went down to Gatlinburg, Tennessee for a week. It was lovely and gorgeous, and I was able to visit two LNSs. In Pigeon Forge, there is a shop called Dixie Darling, which is, I think, worth visiting if you're in the area. Um, every LNS has a different feel to it, right? Dixie Darling was uh, a lot, I would say, uh, the primary maybe focuses of the shop were um, Mill Hill kits. They had a ton, more Mill Hill finishes than I've ever seen in one place. They also had a really interesting room that was all dimensions finishes. So I, I thought that was awesome. I love seeing framed dimensions finishes. They're gorgeous. Dimensions projects, they're a lot of work. So I enjoyed that. Uh, the haul I got from that shop was, this seems random, but they had the model there and it was gorgeous. This is Sheep May Safely Graze by Homespun Elegance. In that sheet, you cross stitch him, and then he has eyelets. I believe the eyelets are in like the fuzzy floss. What is that called? Um, you know what I'm talking about. The floss you fuzz up. It was really cute. Yeah, it was really cute. So that shape came home with me from Dixie Darling, and then. 
Sassy Jacks was an hour and 40 minutes away, and all week I was hemming and hawing about whether I was going to be able to get up there or not. Only having a week, I felt a little guilty about, I knew it was going to take two-thirds of my day to drive up there and drive back. It's not like my family wanted to go. So I was feeling kind of like, should I, should I go, should I not go? All week. And finally I was like, just go. And I'm so glad I went. Sassy Jack's is so worth a long drive. I was so glad I went. Kim is an amazing shop owner. I really, really look up to her. Um, even while I was browsing about, you know, you can hear what's going on. And I can hear Kim encouraging people, teaching people little ticks and trips. She, she's just an amazing woman. And I, I'm so glad that I got the opportunity to visit her shop. Uh, what did I come home with from Sassy Jacks, you say? Let me also say, Sassy Jacks is huge on customer service. And I really, really appreciate that. They go out of their way to give you a great shopping experience. Online, in the store, you gotta go. So I had had this pattern in my Etsy cart forever. This is not Forgotten Farm. Terrible picture. Adorable pattern. It is called Cross-Eyed Cat. And the piece says, Eye of Newt, Wing of Bat, 13 whiskers from a cross-eyed cat. So I had to get that. And I'm thinking I'm going to put that on this fabric um, from Color and Cotton. The guys asked me about, it's totally showing up the wrong side, wrong shade in the camera, but it's called Dried Sage. It's actually a purple. I don't know. What is with cameras with certain colors? This is purple and brown. Anyway. I also got some of these Hands Across the Sea cards. Um, Kim has them out so you can just buy, you can just pick them up. I know a lot of shops have them where you can buy like five or ten. I want to be able to pick my own. And so this is one of the Ufendel cards. Okay, here's what I was thinking. I was thinking that I could just frame this card. Because they're like really high quality. They're really high quality cards. Like, I really think, don't tell anyone, but I really think that you could just frame the card. I got two of this print. And then all of the cards, they're blank inside, but they all come with a pattern on the other side. They're really nice. And they're not, they're just the same price as a regular greeting card. And I also got this one. You could so frame that, couldn't you? I mean, you might like have to cut off, you would cut off some of it. But your friends that they, they come over and look at what's on your walls, they don't care. You could frame this. And then whenever you shop there, you get one of these amazing project stickers with the squirrel and you get a needle, a John James needle, not a throwaway DMC needle. So Sassy Jacks, like you, I think you gotta go. You gotta go. So after I adopted out Santa and I stitched all that stuff, I realized I only had two whips, which is incredible. I really like, uh, I really like being able to finish all of my whips. It doesn't happen very often, but every now and then it does and it makes me very happy. So my two remaining whips are my Chatelaine and my full coverage piece that I'll probably never finish. So let me show you my Chatelaine. I've been working on this one. I feel like I'm losing steam overall on this project. So I'm gonna double down and I'm gonna try to finish it. I think, I hope, I don't know. The repetition is getting to me because these are huge sections and while all the sections are a little bit different, like they all have a mushroom, other than that, other than the mushroom, they're all the same. So all the corners are the same, all the trees are the same, all the stuff, all the garlands are the same. And so now that I'm two thirds of the way done, the repetition is getting pretty boring because what's actually different doesn't take very long. 
So I'm going to have to stand up. But since you saw this last, um, I had put this tree section away without finishing it. And so I finished that section up. And right now, I am working on this bottom corner, which is going to have one of the quintessential red and white mushrooms. So, yeah, <clears throat> the repetition is starting to wear. And it, I don't, it's not like I won't finish this, it's just each section and I've been trying to do like a sec, you know, a corner and then a tree arch and then a corner. Each section is a lot of work. Um, I would say for how much stitching time I typically have, it's probably two weeks for me. I'm going to cough. Hold on. Probably two weeks. Um, I will finish this. I ended up be I ordered the bead pack this week from European Cross Stitch. So um hopefully that one <laughs> hopefully that one will be done. I don't know. Every time I've tried to set goals for that project, I end up fizzing out, so we'll see. And my only other project is Red Troublemakers by RTO. And this project doesn't even feel like it's part of my regular rotation because I'm very, very low key with it. I'm very, I don't know if I'm ever gonna finish it and I'm okay with that. I just work on it when I want to work on it and, and that's what we do. So that's how far I am, which is hardly anything. That are, those are all my whips. I've had a major... <laughs> even after starting and finishing all those smaller projects, I've still had major starditis. I've still almost ordered and started some very large projects. We're talking Christmas at Hawk Run Hollow is calling my name. Don't own the pattern. Don't own any fabric, and I think that's what is keeping me from the brink of that kind of insanity. I also really, really wanted to start Maria Genuaria, which I know you're not even going to know what image that, that pulls up, so here's what it looks like. I call that in my head the angry pirate sampler because obviously the best part of that sampler is the angry pirate in the left hand corner. That thing is really, really big. And so what's going to happen in the coming months? I don't know. We'll see. I have no real plans. Um, right now I am going to start my 2020 just cross stitch ornament for next Christmas. Um, I have some model stitches I'm going to do actually myself. Um, I don't know. We shall see. All right, so the last section of this video, I just want to talk about some things I'm thankful for and read the poem. One of you told me, <laughs> one of you told me you missed the poem last time. I didn't read a poem. Um, I just totally forgot. And... I was happy that somebody missed the poem. <laughs> so I've been reading uh, through the Paul, some of Paul's letters in the New Testament, um, in particular the letters that he wrote while he was in prison, and I've noticed so many times how he's mentioned um, being thankful, and one of them said uh, the phrase, abounding in thanksgiving. I love that. And I mentioned at the beginning of this video how much I've enjoyed fall this year, and I, I really have, and I, I feel like I don't even have enough time to count my blessings because 
I feel more the more you're thankful and the more you focus on being thankful, the more you find to be thankful about. And um, so here are some of the things that I'm thankful for. I am thankful for sleep. Um, I am an in. I wouldn't say I'm an insomniac, an insomniac all of the time, but I definitely get into ruts with insomnia. Um, sometimes I'm sleeping fine for months on end, and then sometimes I'm sleeping horribly. Um, <laughs> and I want to say that I am thankful for insomnia, and I'm thankful for being sick. Um, this last week, I had a horrible cold, and... Um, I think one night I slept two hours. It was really a trial, but I am thankful. I'm thankful for when those daily like comforts and blessings like leave you for a period, like your health, like um, your comfortable home, like the ability to go to sleep. Um, it's nice when you you have periods where you don't have them so that you can appreciate the times when you do because sleep is amazing. Sleep is so awesome, isn't it? And waking up and feeling healthy is so awesome. So I am I'm thankful. I'm thankful <laughs> that I had insomnia. And then I was sick because it just grounds me again on how good I have it. How good I have it. I am thankful that when we went hiking in the Mount, the Smoky Mountains, my son was blazing ahead as he always does. And all of a sudden he stopped. And of course I thought it was going to be a bear. It wasn't a bear. It was gigantic, smoky mountain turkeys and when i say gigantic like i see turkeys all the time in indiana the okay so if the tur the turkeys in northern indiana they are like um You know what? I was trying to think of a car metaphor, but I am so dumb when it comes to cars, I couldn't think of anything. They're like the old junkie used car to the Smoky Mountain Turkey, which is like the Jaguar of turkeys. <laughs> they were they were huge, they were plump, they were black, they were sleek, they were beautiful. And I love that some of you are sending me turkey pictures. Um the next thing I want to mention, and really the last, I'm not going to go on and on, is uh, music. Okay, so um, about a year ago, I mentioned how much I love the musician Passenger. A lot of you agreed with me, and some of you went and tried him for the first time and said you liked him, and that just makes my heart happy. If you like Passenger, so this is one of those recommended um, related topics. If you like Passenger, you absolutely must go try Tom Rosenthal because he is of the similar vein. Delicious, beautiful vocals, beautiful acoustics and instrumentals that literally melt your heart into a pool of being happy. His music makes me so happy. It's just glorious. And while he's a lot similar to Passenger, I think he takes a lot more risks with his voice and with the notes and the instruments and arrangements. And they always pay off. I'm gonna link, like, I, I downloaded one of his albums that I hadn't listened to before for my drive, and it was eight hours. I listened to it from the start to the finish, and I was striving, and I'm not kidding, like, I had it in my headphones, and I was driving along the road, and it was like, that's the, that's the face I had on my, that's the face I was wearing the entire album, because it was so, it's so pretty, um, 
I'll put my favorite, a couple of my favorites down below. No, that's all I have. Let's read the poem. It's, it's a wonderful poem. And um, I will bid you adieu until next time. This poem is from Good Poems by Garrison Keeler. It is called Here by Grace Paley. Hashtag my life goals. And this reminded me of so many lovely women that I know and that are in my life. And I suddenly feel emotional, so I'm really going to try to keep that at bay. Here I am in the garden laughing, an old woman with heavy breasts and nicely mapped face. How did this happen? Well, that's who I wanted to be. At last. A woman in the old style, sitting, stout thighs apart under a big skirt. Grandchild sliding on off my lap, a pleasant summer perspiration. That's my old man across the yard. He's talking to the meter reader. He's telling him the world's sad story, how electricity is oil or uranium and so forth. I tell my grandson, run over to your grandpa, ask him to sit beside me for a minute. I am suddenly exhausted by my desire to kiss his sweet explaining lips. Thank you for spending time with me. I am so thankful for all of you and the fact that you like watch my videos. I've growled in this video a couple times. I don't know what that is about. Be well, do good work, and keep in touch. You can find me everywhere as Lindy Stitches. Much love to you. Happy fall.